Hello, this is Greg Bem, one of the SEC librarians, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate accessing and using the ProQuest database. From the SEC library homepage, click on A to Z databases, and you'll be taken to this screen. From here, click on the letter P to filter the databases for the letter P. Scroll down to the link that says ProQuest and click on that, and you'll be taken to ProQuest in a new tab. Here is the advanced search screen for ProQuest. The top bar is the ProQuest bar. The left-hand side of the screen is a menu that provides access to the different databases and information about ProQuest. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see your recent searches for this current session in this browser, your folder for where you've saved research, and your account. You can create a free account with ProQuest to save your research. Beneath that is a light gray bar. You can go to the basic search screen, which I will show you briefly. You can stay on the advanced search screen. You can browse the publications within ProQuest. And you can change databases. ProQuest is a platform that provides access to a number of databases. And at Spokane Community College, these are the databases that we have access to. As you can see, a variety of them have been checked by default. These are the most common databases that we are activating in the quote unquote ProQuest database. But if you want to change this, you can. Okay. So advanced search has a variety of tools that we will not be covering, but underneath those tools, we will see the search bars. There are numerous search bars and Boolean operators available. And then there's a lot of different filters that you can activate or deactivate as needed to filter and narrow your search from the get-go. As you can see, full text is checked by default. There are numerous abstracts available in ProQuest that would show up if full text was not checked. So keep that in mind. I'm going to do a search for poetry. And when I type in poetry, one thing you will see is that there is an autocomplete feature that provides a lot of specific keyword phrases that includes poetry. You can also opt to turn off autocomplete if you find it unhelpful and or annoying. For us, we're just going to search for poetry. We can search within various parts of each of the sources, including the title and the author and so on, but we're going to search everything. And when we're ready, we can click on the green search button. This will take us to the search results. As you can see, we have over a million results for poetry. The middle of the search results screen shows all of our search results. The left-hand side shows our filters, many of which were available at the advanced search screen. And on the right, we have additional widgets that describe different types of things, books that show up, videos, and so on. The middle of the search results screen includes the ability to browse all of the different sources that have shown up with your search search terms. Each of these sources has its own icon or book cover as a preview. It also tells you what type of source it is, gives you the title, publication information, and then a snippet from the abstract. Also note that you can click abstract details to go directly to the abstract, or you can click on full text to go directly to the full text. There are also a few extra tools within the search results themselves, including a citation tool, which will load this screen and allow you to create references, including an APA and MLA and Chicago. You can also email the source to yourself or save to your research if you're logged in. Let us scroll to This trade journal, Soul Flowers, a poetry collection for enjoyment and reflection. 
And here we can see this book review. And in this article overview page, we are set to the full text by default. If we click on abstract details, it will take us to this screen, which shows us all kinds of information about this article. On the right-hand side of the screen, we are also given suggested sources that might be relevant or related. And we also can look at the different indexing terms or subject terms that might be related. And we, if we search for these, we might be able to get similar sources for our research. Let's go to another one. And each of these provides lots of information included, including at the bottom suggested sources, which I did missed on the last article. One thing to note is at the top, you'll see a bunch of tools, including save as PDF, which will allow you to download this article outside of ProQuest and read it inside the browser. Note that it will take a moment to download, but then it will load in the browser and you will be able to read it in the browser or in the PDF reader that is installed on your computer. That concludes the overview of the ProQuest database demonstration. If you have any questions about ProQuest, please reach out to the SCC librarians and we would be happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and take care.